Hi guys! Welcome to Green Water Fish! Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to set up a table of centerpiece using an aquarium. So I have a mini tank and it's not those one of those traditional tank and it actually looks pretty neat. It's very easy to set up. You can buy any um, glassware from um, anywhere. You can buy it at TJ Maxx, you can buy it at Target, you can buy it anywhere and you can be creative of which ones to use. You want to keep in mind how big you want to set up your tank. Um, if you want a big table centerpiece, then maybe you want to aim for something that can contain at least four or five gallons of water. But if you want something really simple, then maybe one or two gallons of water would be sufficient. And today I'm going to show you guys uh, one of the table centerpieces. So this is one of the 4 gallon bubble bowls that I found at my local TJ Maxx store and as you can see um, I planted it pretty full and it's pretty much a jungle style bubble bowl and it's sitting right on top of my desk and I really enjoyed it because it really helped me focus on my work and also um, help me relax. And this bowl has been set up for almost a year now and um, it's pretty much established and it's been pretty self-sufficient. It doesn't require much maintenance work. Um, I basically just change 30 to 50 percent of water each week which takes me about five to ten minutes and there's nothing else I need to do so it's pretty easy and pretty good looking I think. Very simple and elegant. And I'm going to show you guys how to set it up. So the first step is to choose the right container for your aquarium. You want to choose an aquarium that's small enough that can be a table centerpiece, but big enough to uh, be able to provide you enough room to work with. Keep in mind that the smaller the container, the harder it is to maintain stable water parameter, and the harder it is to pick the right kind of plants to fit in your container and it'll be even harder for you to put any livestock in there. And for me, I picked out this 4 gallon bubble bowl from a local TJ Maxx store and I think it's just perfect for a small table centerpiece because 4 gallons is big enough for me to put one or two um, or three fish in there and big enough for me to put a couple of plants in there but not too big that it takes up too much space on the desk. And the second thing to consider when you start an aquarium is the substrate, especially if you're going to do a planted aquarium. So substrate-wise, you can find it anywhere at any local fish store or pet store. Some people even go with any place in that you can find at even Home Depot. But keep in mind that you don't want to use substrate or gravel that's too big, that has a lot of gaps that can trap um, debris and food and fish poop in there, that would not be good for your um, water condition. And also the bigger the gravel or substrate particle, the harder it is to secure finer plants in the substrate. However, you don't want to go with substrates that are too fine, this is because um, then you won't have enough water flow through the substrate and you'll have very thin layer of beneficial bacteria that can colonize in the substrate and end up with a thick layer of anaerobic bacteria in your substrate. For me, I just picked out um, aquarium sand, which is not too fine, but um, not big at all. It's on our smaller side because I want something that's finer and also I want to have quarry catfish. This fish is pretty delicate, especially where they have the four whiskers coming out. If you have pretty big gravels, they'll injure their whiskers and they can't really search fruit that way with their injured whiskers. So it, it'll just be friendlier for my catfish. So I decided to go with black sand. Now we talked about aquarium, talked about substrate. Um, the third important thing for a planted aquarium is fertilizer or root tap or any substrate fertilizer. So for me, I want to keep this bubble bowl as simple as possible and I don't want to spend too much money on it. So I didn't want to go with any brand um, fertilizer and I didn't want to do a dirty tank either because that would be really messy. So I decided to go with this awesome product that I found out. It's called Cosmo Call Plus. It's actually used for gardening purposes, but it contains a lot of good element elements for um, plant growth and it doesn't contain any toxic elements for 
um, aqua culture. So it's a great product. So I just lay a thin layer of Cosmo Pearl Plus and put a thin layer of aquarium sand on it, and voila, that's the first step that's done. So the second step is the fun part, which is the aquascaping part, meaning you just decide how the tank will look like. And a lot of people will choose to put a piece or two of heart piece there, and that's actually one of the key elements of aquascaping. Um, there are many options out there. There are stones, many different kinds of stones, driftwoods, many different kinds of driftwoods. Um, or some people can even use ornament. And I decided to use uh, just three pieces of simple stones in the tank. I just want to arrange them just in a way that I feel um, most happy about and make sure uh, that they look balanced and such. So there's the second look. Now the third part would be adding the plants. Now this is tricky because first of all you want to think about what they would naturally be looking like. Um, whatever plants that you got from local fish store or online, they very likely will look different once they um, grow out. Um, and they'll sometimes look a lot larger than what they used to look like. And also you want to consider what kind of setup you have, which brings to a second topic, which is the lighting, which I'll talk about later. Um, but for this bubble bowl, I decided to go with something that's simple and low maintenance, and I didn't want to have um, very needy plants. I just wanted to have something that's easy going, low maintenance, um, plus my setting wouldn't be a high um, light intensity setting. So I chose some Luigia hygrophila and brown crypt to start with. Those plants are great because they um, consumes a lot of ammonia and nitrite and nitrates, which is very important for those bubble bowls because at the initial stage of uh, tank setting down, settling down, um, there is a very high chance of algae growing. Uh, especially if you decide not to use any filter like how I decided to do it first. Um, it's very important to have plants that grow really fast, that consume a lot of uh, nitrogen products. Um, so then they can compete with the algae and make sure that your tank is under control. Um, and hygrophila is known, for, known as a nitrogen sink. So that's why I chose those plants. In addition to those fast-growing stem plants or hygrophila, a lot of people choose to put floating plants for the initial stage as well. Floating plants um, are great and you have a lot to choose from, from duckweed to frostbite to water lettuce to even water sprite. So there are a lot of different uh, floating plants that you can choose. They look great, but the only downside to them is that they take over a lot of water surface and then they block the lights from reaching into the tank. So if you have any plants that need at least medium intensity and you have a small uh, tank to deal with, maybe you should reconsider putting a large amount of floating plants in your tank. And as you can see here, I later on added a lot of water spray. Um, actually, these, all of these water spray come from um, just one mother water spray. And this is because when the plant is floating, this stimulates them to shoot out little sprouts to grow new baby plants. So basically they duplicate themselves when they're floating. But you can also plant them in a substrate and they look totally different when they're in a substrate. And they grow really fast, sucks up a lot of nitrogen products, so this plant is awesome. Now the next step is filtration. So you can use a filter or you can choose not to. Originally, I wanted to do it as a low, low, low tech aquarium, meaning there's nothing additional besides the lighting. However, um, I found that pretty hard to do because without filtration, you don't have any water surface agitation. You usually have a thin layer of something floating on top. And, um, and also, I had a couple of bad weeks when I had almost no time for myself to sleep, so I kind of ignored the tank for a little bit so my tank took a hit and the tank start growing green water which is another kind of algae so then I decided to add a hang on back filter 
This actually gives me a lot of freedom because first of all, it takes, a, takes care of water quality pretty well. Second of all, it gives me more room to stock one or two more fish, uh, which I took the opportunity <laughs> to add quarry catfish, as you can see here. Um, so yeah, it's up to you. It does take up some space though, as you can see here, but I think it's worth it. It saves a lot of effort. And the next big topic is lighting. Lighting is very important for plant growth and you cannot um, have a successful planted tank without sufficient lighting. Um, but for such a small aquarium um, on a table, it'll be easier for you to just use a depth lamp and then plug in a compact fluorescent light bulb. Um, just make sure that you use the right color. You want to pick something that's cold, something that says it's daylight color. Um, if you look at the color, um, it'll be 6500K usually. Um, so that'll be the right color to choose. And um, in terms of watts wise, I usually go with, if you want to grow low light plants, it would be like one watt per gallon would be sufficient. Um, if you want height light, it will be three watts per gallon at least. Um, but this rule is just a very, um, I don't know, rough course estimation. You can't really rely on that. But for me, this four gallon bubble bowl, I use a 10 watt CFL light for it, and it's way more enough for my plants. And some plants even like to grow out of water, and you can just let it be because when plants grow out of water, you'll notice that the plant will look totally different compared to when they're submerged um, in water. And sometimes they may even give you a little flower. So, um, as you can see in the picture, my hygrophila once was trying to grow out of water, and it looked pretty nice. And yeah, just enjoy your plants. So, before you're adding any fish, I will recommend that you let the tank cycle. Um, after the tank is cycled, you can add in fish, which is another exciting uh, milestone for an aquarium. But for such a small aquarium, your options will be very limited. There was a rule saying one inch per gallon rule, but again, this is a really coarse estimation again. But for me, since there's a filter and this gallon, this bubble bowl is about four gallons big, I can stock maybe four or five fish um, very easily. Um, this is also because my bubble bowl is very heavily planted and those plants will uh, take a huge role of making the water um, more pristine than without plants. So I decided to go with uh, fish that are smaller. I chose three neon tetras and I also used to have a um, guppy fish but he just passed away. Um, I think when I bought him, he's already one year old and guppy fish usually lives for about two years on average. So I think he had a good life. And then later on, I added in two quarry catfish just to feed off on anything that's left on the bottom to help the gravel clean. And lastly, um, just make sure that you don't overfeed them because this is a very small tank. Any slight changes uh, of water parameter will be very detrimental to um, your livestock and plants in a tank. So don't overfeed them and make sure that you do water changes very frequently, at least once a week. Because this is such a small tank, um, it is very crucial to do water changes very frequently. So I do 30 to 50% of water changes each week. And lastly, you may wonder why I have a mention about heater. Um, for me, uh, my bubble bowl is sitting in my room, and my room is usually around 70 to 80 degrees year-round, so there's no need for me to have a heater here. But if you live in a colder climate or your bowl is going to be in, at a colder place, don't forget to add a little heater there, just because those plants and fish are tropical um, animals and plants, and they want to have temperature that's around 72 degrees. Um, ish. That'll be ideal for them, depending on the species. So yeah, this is the end of the video of how to set up a table centerpiece using an aquarium. I hope you guys find this video useful and I hope you guys enjoy this video. And let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, as usual, feel free to comment below. And I'm going to post another video about a different table centerpiece. It'll be even easier than this one, I promise. So yeah, 
I'll see you guys next time. Bye.